Hello, my name is Joy Ware. I am a senior technical account manager here at VMware. Today, we're going to do a uh, what we call a Nano Tan Lab. These are 30 minute little sessions. Uh, but what we're going to do today is over the Horizon Log4j with the mitigation scripts. These are provided on the VMSA page. Uh, the initial one for all the products, you can see at the top of the link. Um, one of the things we're going to cover is the, the mitigation scripts uh, will get you to the 2.16 version in most cases. Uh, while that is ideal to be more on the most current version, uh, when all this was coming out, 2.16 was told to be the newest and uh, one that has all the fixes. As we started pushing out updates, it was uh, determined from the like Apache Foundation that 2.17.x is the most preferred because of some other vulnerabilities that were in, uh, released in or found in 2.16. So this little verbiage I'm going to point out here that came out on the July 7th. While we understand that you know prior releases of 2.17 uh, has these other CVEs. Uh, in a non-default configuration, you should not be affected by these uh, as well. So we will be doing these mitigation scripts that are also found in the Horizon Components uh, VMSA. And there's another one for the UAGs. And then we will be actually have to enable SSH on the UAGs just so we can automate this process. And that's what that other KV article is. Lastly, uh, I will be putting all my scripts out here on GitHub. You can find me as Joey VMware. So let me get off of this. And then we will just go ahead and bring up my RDSH window. Go ahead and get this as well. Okay. In my little scenario here, I have two connection servers and two UAGs. One acts as an external, one acts as internal. And then I have, just in this case, one Windows 10 parent or gold image that we will also be applying the script to. Uh, so right now, everything is up. And we will now go over here. My Script is what we're doing is we're going to log in using uh, one of my credentials that I have for login to vCenter, which is one of my as well to log into Horizon. We will log into vCenter. We're going to do this because we're going to take a snapshot. Um, in my scenario, I have a, a folder called PowerShell Deploy, and my servers are in there. If you want to use this, you can put your VMs in the same folder or in a folder and change this one line that I have right here. Or you can just manually take the snapshot and run. Um, the other thing is we're gonna connect into the horizon uh, environment. Uh, we are gonna take a list of all the connection servers. So in my case, we have the uh, connection server one and two. And I'll just show you real quick where that is getting that information from. So if we go into settings, servers, connection servers, one and two. So if you had three and four, five, six, wherever you had, um, this would automatically pull it and then import it uh, or create it into a uh, CSV. And then we will import that for, uh, the automation part of this. So let's go ahead and kick this off. I'm going to just go to the root here. Okay. And we're going to run this. I do have a kind of five minute uh, sleep timer here. I'm doing this. So in this case, let's say if you were doing this in the maintenance window, it's going to start on the first connection server, uh, which whichever first one's in the list. It will stop the service, run the patch, or run the run the uh, workaround script, start the service back up, and then I want to wait a good five minutes for the next process. You should do this in a maintenance window. If you do any type of tunneling, you may have user outages. They may get disconnected. If you are not doing tunneling, 
the only issue we may have at this point is if a user is trying to authenticate against the uh, server, the connection server at that time, they may get a failure. If you are using load balancers and they have a health check um, that we uh, that VMware has out there for a, like a best practice, it should determine that the server is down and take it out of the load balancer pool. Um, in this case, I do not have that, so I'm not going to show that. Um, but um, is, you should be able to do this in a good maintenance window. So right now, we've already logged in. We've taken the snapshots. We have already uh, started stopping the service. Um, I do have a part of my script where I make a temp folder and I copy the batch script over that is in the the MSA that we're, I'll show you real quick. So as you read, you know, it kind of gives you uh, what, what needs to be updated, what needs to be changed. So I'm gonna scroll down to the scripted mitigation for Horizon Connection Server, Agent Windows, HTML Agents. So you can download this zip file right here. It has a bat file or a batch file in it. That is what we're doing here is I am copying that batch file to the C temp folder on my connection servers and then running it. So in this case, connection server one is done. It has renamed the affected jar files. Uh, if you read this, the batch script, it actually puts it as like dot restore. So in case you did have an issue, you could revert back or you can revert back to the snapshot. Uh, I will say, if you have an issue and you're going to revert back to a snapshot, since these have an Atom database that are synced together, you might not have to revert both of them back. If you have one issue, you may have to uninstall the one that has the issue and reinstall the connection server uh, software. So right now, we're going to wait the five minutes. Uh, I can show you that this is should be back up, or it's coming back up. We'll leave this up and running and you can see it's up before the next one starts working. The connection server two should still be up. It is. This is the, one of the reasons I put that wait timer in here, the sleep timer, because my home lab is not ideal. It's not, uh, I would definitely not run production on it, but you know, uh, my servers are a little less on CPU and memory, so they take a little bit longer to come all the way up. Your environment may not need five minutes, but you know, please test this out in your lab first if you, uh, if you can.
Okay, after five minutes, the uh, connection server should be coming back up. Log in, make sure everything's okay. Okay. The second connection server should kick off in just a, a minute. Uh, again, it's going through the, uh, the little loop right here and applying all the settings. There it goes. Connection server two is stopping the service. We should see that that it is down. It's down. Now it's just waiting for it to stop. Then it will go into the second step here, which is the uh, batch file or creating the, the folder that is already created, copying the batch file over, and then invoking the command remotely to kick off the batch file. And we are doing the resolve force. If we go back to the script or the VMSA page, the uh, Sorry, this one right here, the resolve force. Basically, uh, this one will base force it no matter what version is out there and, and update it to the 2.16. One of the final steps we'll do with the connection server is I want to check it based on the 2.17.1 version. Now, this will be a good uh, step for anybody that is they want to prove to security or um, your incident response team if they ask what version you could run the, this the, the bash script again but do a slash check version equals whatever version you want to go against uh, i know 217.1 or 217.2 is one of the latest versions so i did one and we will uh, see when this is all done that it will come back and tell us that while we're not at the 2.17 version we are at the 2.16 again uh, due to that verbiage that we, we understand that there, there is another vulnerability that could be affected in a non-default setting, uh, configuration setting, and we will be applying the 2.17 and future releases or whatever version is going to be out after the 2.17. So we will wait the five minutes for that to start back up. The process does not take very long. We'll just wait.
Okay, after five or so minutes, the second connection server is back up. So the next step it will be doing on our script is actually verifying the version, and then we will move towards the horizon uh, with the parent image. Give that a second here. Um, and in this case too, my horizon parent, I only have the one, so I kind of hard coded that desktop name in there. You could do a like a C, uh, CSV file with all of them in there and just call it like I did uh, for the connection servers. Um, in this scenario, we're just gonna just do the one. And also that uh, parent image is already in the domain. So that's how I'm able to use the same credentials to get into it. If it is not in the domain, there are some other steps you may have to apply. So if you run into any issues like that, um, you may reach out to me on my GitHub or Twitter. Um, or if you have a TAM, please have them reach out to me and I'll definitely be able to uh, help you out. So while we're waiting on this to finish the, the timer. There it goes. So now it's gonna check it. So it says it found, you know, Log4j uh, library containing Log4j classes. And it's going to check the version. And obviously, right there, it just says 2.16. They detected it was 2.16. So it's going to go through and find all the uh, log4j files and give us a good printout. And then it's going to do it for the other connection server as well. So the printout for CS, my uh, first connection server, is the system is not patched with the provided log4j version. Now, what that means is this little line right here. That's the provided version I gave it to check against. I could have done 2.16 and it would have came back and said it's okay. But I want to be able to show you what uh, your secure team or incident response team may kind of flag and why you're getting that. Um, this is for the Ryzen agent side. So it's already kicked that off. So it's connected to my parent image. It has copied the file out there and it is running it now. It's already done the install. Now it's going to do the exact same thing. It's going to check the version. And it's going to tell you the same thing. This is 216. When this is done, your next step as a Horizon admin would be to take a new snapshot of your parent image VM, uh, shut it down, take the snapshot, and then uh, push that snapshot out to all your instant clone pools, whichever pool you have for that image. Okay, we are done now with the connection servers and the parent, um, parent VM. Okay. And then the next step, we will be doing the UAGs. Um, as a, in my script here, I'm going to actually do PowerShell and do SSH over PowerShell to copy the, the script that we get from the VMSA and then do everything else that the VMSA says. If you have like 2009, 2000, or 2111, um, there's some other additional settings you need to place. So if you go back to the VMSA, that's the connection server, here are the UAGs. So I downloaded the script here, and I'm uploading that script, letting it run. And then and it says right here, if you have 2009, 2011, it is also necessary to make these other changes. So that is what we're gonna do here because I'm running 2106 in my UAGs. And the next step I need to do is to allow um, 
SSH because when I built out my UAGs, I went with the default options not to allow SSH. If you have already done this, you can skip this step, but here's how you do it. You have to open up the console. We need to edit the sshd underscore config file. need to look for permit root login no i'm going to change that to a yes next we need to comment out max sessions lastly in this we need to comment out the allow groups line save that file and then now next we need to echo the file or the config here. And in this documentation, it's a little, it's an older version, it looks like. So this check uh, config SSD add is will not run. That's okay, we don't need it. Start the service. I'm going to do the other one real quick. Again, edit the sshd underscore config file. Look for permit root login. No, change that to a yes. Search for max sessions, comment that out. Search, search for uh, allow groups, comment that out, save the file, echo. HD start. Yeah, there. Close those. Go back to our H window. And in the script, again, I'm I'm hitting both of those. Um, if you've not installed the module, uh, it's, it's in the line coder here. I'm going to connect the sessions. In this case, you could just uh, keep adding all your ones you have. And again, just multiple lines. Copy the files here. This is a session ID of when you create the session. So when you run this, it'll actually give you a session ID. So if you say if you created a third one, you have to comma three or comma two, comma three, comma whatever. So let's run this real quick. And it's going to do all of them at the same time. In this case, uh, you should have no, I don't believe there's any down issues, except for maybe authentication will happen. But um, I had to do a timeout on this here for about three minutes, or it would time out, the command would time out before it actually finished. So just give it about three minutes and then it'll be finished. And as you see, both uh, UAGs, in my case, were fully patched down. So this is how you can 
do the scripted mitigations across your uh, connection servers, your parent image, and your UAGs. If you are in a scenario where you still have security servers, it's the exact same process as the connection servers. So uh, in that case, you may just have to, uh, there might be another way we can do that with some scripting, but uh, you can just hard set them in there and, and run the same commands. Uh, if you have uh, Linux desktops, you would go back into the the MSA and it tells you what you can do on those right here. Again, if you have any issues, please contact your TAM or support. Um, all of this, what I've shown, is not supported by GS. Uh, you are uh, running these uh, scripts on your on your own, but um, the scripts inside of them like the, the scripts that we downloaded from the VMSA are supported from GS. They will actually ask you to run those. So again, have a great day and keep your stuff patched.